her name is Jane Raynor. Last name is spelled R-A-Y-N-O-R. And what is your birthday? December 13, 1930. Where were you born? I was born in Baguio, Philippines. Philippines? What city? Baguio. Ba could you spell it? B-A-Q-U-I-O. Well, my father in the Philippines was a military. And when I was two years old, mm -hmm. we moved to uh, Vancouver Barracks, Washington, where I grew up and grad graduated from high school, Vancouver High School. He came over here because his tour duty in Philippines was up. He, uh, we moved over there, and I grew up over there when I was from two years old till graduation from high school. So your father's American military army personnel uh -huh. went to Philippines and came back to Washington State. I'm, fr I'm from the family of 12. I have s seven brothers and five sisters. I mean, six brothers and five sisters. When did you graduate high school? 19, uh, June 1950. Oh, on the, on the month and the year of the Korean War broke out. Right. Oh, did you know anything about Korea before? No. You didn't learn anything from high school? No. They didn't teach? OK. World history, they didn't teach. How, wh anything about Asia? Just uh, Japan, because uh, the war was the Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, and something like that. But uh, Korea, I didn't have a sense of <laughs> about it. Uh huh. So after high school, I graduated from. Uh, I mean, I went I enlisted in the uh, army. Why did you do that? Because I loved the Army, because I grew up in the Army camp, and I always wanted to be an Army man. Uh-huh. When was it? Hmm? Was it right after the high school that right you enlisted? Right after high school. It? So where did you go to receive basic military training? Fort Ord, California. Uh-huh. And what kind of training? Well, I, I, wa I, wa I wanted to be a cook. Oh. I wanted to be a cook because in the National Guard I was a cook. So did you have a choice to to get that training? Well, I, they they I did all my, most of my training in the mess hall. Mhm. Mm I never fired my weapon in basic training. <laughs> and I my aptitude tests Guess was good in communication, so I initially went to um, Camp Gordon, Georgia, mm -hmm. to be a Poland lineman and a switchboard operator. Huh. But somehow uh, they tried to make me climb the poles, and I was scared <laughs> <laughs> to climb the poles, and I was turning up the wood with those leg irons they give me to climb the poles with. <laughs> So the commander said, get, him, get that man off my poles. He w he's tearing him up, the bottom part. Then they, uh, uh, switchboard operator, uh -huh. all those communication wires, yellow, red, bl blue, and w all that color. I didn't understand what they were doing. So I messed up on that, so they got rid of me off, off of that. They put me in. That's a stove, uh, a fireman on a stove putting coal, coal in the furnace. Where was it? Fort Gordon, Georgia, Camp Gordon at the time. Camp Gordon? Mm hmm And I wanted to go to Korea. Why? Hmm? Why did you want to go, well, go to Korea? Well, my brother was over there. Your brother? Yeah. He what, was what's his name? George. He was with the 3rd Infantry Division. Your uh, elder brother? No, younger brother. Younger brother. And of he course, he lied about his age. 
and but he he was already there and he got wounded already. What what's the unit that he belonged to? Thirty uh, eighth division. Uh, what division you said? Third uh, Infantry Division. Sorry. Third. He went over there with the uh, when they had the. Uh, uh, What you call it, the uh, Chosen Reservoir. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He went with the third division. He landed in uh, Incheon, not Incheon, but uh, Busan, Wonsan. Wonsan uh -huh. with the third division. Mm -hmm. So he got wounded over there. So I wanted to go over there anyway. They finally had my wish. Cause the first, <laughs> the first sergeant <laughs> said, "You mess up everything I do." But to come to commander like me, because I was sharp, clean cut, so he got me the, uh, my orders to go to Korea. So were you not afraid? Because your brother wounded already, you were not afraid? Mm -mm. Well, I wasn't afraid then. So when did you leave for Korea? Uh, I, I arrived in Korea in April 51. Where? Busan or Incheon? Busan. Busan. And I initially was signed to the 24th Single Company. 24 what? 24th uh -huh. Single Company. Single Company? Yeah, Communication Company. Okay. But... Um, uh, so you still belong to what division? A 24th division. 24th. But they needed, they needed people for the 19th because they had an operation, offensive operation. Uh -huh. So uh, I tried to volunteer. And I figured try it out and I come back to communication again. So I joined the 19th Infantry. Mm -hmm. Um, e Company, 2nd Battalion, uh -huh. yeah, 19th. Yeah. And I haven't even fired my weapon yet. I haven't even fired my weapon from basic training till then. I still haven't fired my weapon. So we had this big German platoon sergeant. He asked me, he asked me, uh, no, he asked all of us. He looked at us and he said, the two Hawaii boys who was uh, short, and he said, you are uh, BAR men. Mm -hmm. He said, what can you do? I looked at him, big, real big, scary guy. I said, I don't know. And he said, you're going to be point. I said, what, what are you supposed to do? He threw his helmet down. And he said, what kind of people I have assigned to this platoon? He, he really was angry. Because I told him I didn't know what to do. <laughs> he put me at point. So that's when I first got in combat. We tacked this hill, and we had a lot of listed reserve uh, who just called up, ready reserve. Not ready, uh, inactive reserve. They called them up. So we salted a hill. They were about 34, 35 years old, and they, they couldn't climb the hill. What do you mean? You, were, you arrived in Busan, and then you went to where? I went down to the uh, Repo Company, 24th Division. Where in Busan? Well, I forget where there was. Well, anyway, I joined the 24th Division Company. I mean the repo company, and then. Uh, so you moved from Busan to somewhere, right? Wherever the twenty fourth repo company okay. was. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, since they needed people for the nineteenth, so I I volunteered. Yeah. So my first uh, battle, all those list of reserve people, I mean those uh, ready reserve people, could not even make it up only three of us made up the hill my squad leader and two, one other rifleman and i figured he's going to stop and wait for the uh, uh the rest of them to catch up he said our mission is to go forward mm -hmm. 
I look at him, I said, that guy crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. I was scared then. I was, we moved up the hill, then we saw, I saw a big boulder. And the Korean boulders were big up in the mountain, big rock. I was going to go look over it, climb up and look over it and see what I could see. Before that, they opened up with burp guns and throwing hand grenades. And the other two ran down the hill, and I was behind by myself. I was <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, then, then I noticed the, the uh, burp guns were cutting the cutting uh, trees above me closer, and the hand grenade potato smasher was coming closer to me. So I made my mind up, and I made my pass. I, lo uh, I just made a pass, and I lost my uh, helmet, my poncho. I'm lucky I came down with my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> then when I came down, uh, where the rest of the two were waiting for me, I laid my weapon down. I, I didn't know what to do. Then the company commander came up and said, well, what you doing without your rifle? That rifle is supposed to be in your hands at all times. <laughs> I was so scared. Then they made us go up again. I was again point. No, this time, no helmet. I it still have. I still didn't fire no weapon. It wasn't real. It was real, real fight, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Now I went up again the second time. Then, uh, so we moved up the hill. We were under fire again. Machine gun firing over my head. Our machine gun firing over our head, and they were firing too. And I heard the machine gunner say, "Get the hell out of there! Move out!" I still didn't see the enemy. I guess they were coming up, and, uh, the machine gun over my head, so I, I dashed over to the rock, and uh, like a rifle grenade went off on against the rock and wounded the uh, platoon leader in the eye. And so three times he tried to take the, uh, go up, but the ch Chinese, so they decided to leave him up there. So. We, uh, that night time, I they put me in a hole with two other seasoned veterans. Then the enemy attacked, the Chinese attacked us, and I couldn't see a darn thing, all the flashes going on. I still didn't fire my weapon. I just, <laughs> I see nothing but flashes. So I decided to take a hand grenade, I threw it and hit a tree, almost came back in a hole with me. But after that, uh, I was, I think I haven't, still didn't fire my weapon. But uh, on my second uh, assault on a hill later on, then I finally fired my, uh, fired my weapon. <laughs> so next day, you mean? <laughs> no. It's about, uh, say, we went back in reserve, and about uh, two weeks later, we went back up. Do you remember the name of the camp you were there in the hill? Was it punchable? No, no, no. The, this, the hill was, uh, I don't know. We were on the offense. Do you, you don't have any idea where that was? Was it in the middle of the peninsula or west or east? I'm not sure. Uh, the Chinese moved February and they started their offense. Right. And April, we started pushing back. Okay. And when I joined them, we started pushing them back. And about May, it was kind of settling down, close to the Kansas line. I Kansas think it was. line, okay. Close to the Kansas line, because they established the Kansas line. I think it was the Kansas. Wyoming was Kansas. Mm -hmm. Kansas, I think. Okay. And I finally fired my weapon. But I finally I fired my weapon when, when I saw the Chinese over there, and I fired it close to the platoon leader's ear. <laughs> he, he looked at me, he took, he took the weapon away from me. <laughs> That's so funny. What, what am I supposed to do? I see the Chinese running, I'm supposed to shoot. Huh. Yeah, we're not supposed to fire by his ear. <laughs> So that, that was it uh, on the, my first initially combat.
And when I got wounded. Where were you wounded? When? Uh, October 14th, 1951. We started our push, our fall, fall push. I think it was in uh, a Kumsong area. Kumsong, yes. There was one big hill there. Yeah. The enemy was really entrenched. So when we got up on close to the hill, it was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There were, uh, the tanks were firing over our heads for support, artillery, napalm was dropping on the enemy. When it got 4 o'clock, we were overstaffed too. We were we had fifty men in a platoon. Mm. We had even two co captains in a company, because the in the National Guard they replaced them from I think from from uh, the south somewhere, so they just su supported us. So they gave us fifty men. So we started up the hill in five minutes. We lost uh, uh, out of 15 in the platoon. I think we're down with, uh, later on I found out were 35 people left out of, uh, from my platoon. I was wounded by a hand grenade in the groin. Where, and, groin? And right here. Oh all over here and uh, my forearm. So it was just like a walking dead. It just tightened up and I couldn't walk, hardly walk, and, but I had to get down to the A station. Mm. So I walked down the hill, across a uh, creek, up to the, where the, this, the company uh, reserve bus, then down to the A station the litters to pick us up. But there's so many wounded. Seriously, people got really wounded bad. In fact, the napalm uh, came close to where I was, but it didn't hit us. It hit some parts of the, uh, I don't know how the airplane uh, did that because we, the people wore panels on their back to show uh, that uh, where our location was. But I don't know what the reason was, but anyway, they dropped napalm, and some of the people got burned pretty bad. And when I got down to the battalion A station, they had so many wounded, from not only from our company, but other companies. And they only were taking the seriously wounded back. They looked at me, I, uh, my arm was like this. I couldn't walk, hardly walk at all. And he, they said, you have to go back to the company. I'm still bleeding. They didn't patch me up or nothing. Then I got back to the company. The uh, rear uh, detachment there, the cooks, the baker, the supply people, they seen me just like the Band of Brothers. They took me, gave me a bath put clean clothes on me, put me to bed, and that's where I recovered from. Then later on, I had a little bit of trouble with the fragments still in me. Mm. They sent me up to, uh, all the way to MASH Hospital when everything quieted down. Mm. Then the doctors told me, well, we can't do nothing for you. If we take it out, they're gonna hurt more parts of your body, so leave it in there and let it digest itself out, and, or let the skin grow over the fragments. And uh, that's how I got wounded. Mm. So finally, we, we rotated to Japan. The 40th uh, Division replaced us, and we moved to uh, so, uh, Camp Hagen, Camp Hagen, Japan. I mm -hmm. don't know where that was. But anyway, that's where the 19th moved. Hmm. We replaced. 
And after I got back to the mainland, I wanted to go back again. I don't know why. I just wanted to go back again. So this time I went back with and joined the Second Infantry Division. When did you go again? Hmm? When did you go again? Um, After the war? No. No. Uh, for my second tour of 1952, October 1952, I joined the um, Company A, 1st Battalion, 38th Infantry. Well, then... Uh, you said A Company and what? 1st Battalion, mm -hmm. 38th. Second Infantry Division. Yeah. I was a corporal then. And uh, became squad leader. Mm -hmm. Where were you at the time, at your second tour? <sighs> All over. Uh, I think from area from Baldy to... Uh, Baldy to Punchable. No, it was to the right. Mm. Okay. But but in the area in the central. Yeah. Arsenal Hill, Arsenal T Bone Hill. Mm -hmm. T Bone Hill. Boy, they had a lot of artillery. Yep. Whew. I remember on New Year's Eve, we uh, they got run off of uh, Arsenal, and we moved up to replace the company who was up there. And it's so cold. It was so cold. I was hungry. Then he gave gave me a sea ration, corned beef and hash. Mm. It was frozen. I couldn't even open it up. I cried. I instead of calling for God or Buddha or anybody, I just was calling for my mommy. Because I was close to my mom, that's why. Mm. When I'm in trouble, I always call my mommy. And throughout that area, then till the last part of June 1953, when a closer rotation on um, the hill, um, what hill was that? Um, the the, uh, the uh, Marines just moved off. He moved up and replaced them. I forget the hill. Well, according to Stars and Stripes, 2,500 rounds came in on our position in 30 minutes. That's according to Stars and Stripes. And it tore up everything. Wow. And you survived it. I survived, but my sh I had three men on a uh, listening post. They overran them and killed them all. And later on, I was supposed to go to orientation. I left my three men outside the bunker. Then they told me to take the um, people from the 3rd Battalion from another unit, three, uh, three people that were cleaning up the trench. I told, I told them to get, uh, get them out of the area and put them in my uh, sleeping bunker. I had a cave. I think that maybe the Chinese made it or somebody made the cave. I had a sleeping bunker. So I put them in. Two went in and one went around the corner. Then a round came in. Blew me, blew me uh, against, uh, the concussion blew me back. Then set the man inside the uh, 
cave on fire. And I could hear him screaming. Then uh, I, I looked in there, I was screaming. Then another round came in again, and my three men who was outside the bunker were wounded. I looked at that, the leg wound, the guy wounded, and they're all calling my name, <laughs> hearing that guy crying too. I said, oh my goodness, what the hell? I, could, I couldn't even think. But the, uh, these medics, our platoon medic, brave medics, came in, took care of the problem. He said, you look like a ghost. Because I, I didn't know what to do or who to start a treatment on. This one or this one or the, what to do with the man burning in the cave. So they straightened it out for me. The medics and then other people came, helped. As a leader, I think uh, I should have been better, uh, uh, more stronger. Maybe the concussion from the artillery round or something. But the whole tour of duty of the last part of the war was all artillery. I went out. Every time we went on out guard, they gave, we had the best equipment. But even with shoe packs on, I mean, uh, the thermal boots, it was cold. It's like I'm cold over here. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so that's it. So when did you leave Korea? Uh, uh, last part of June. 53. 53. Knew what happened to your younger brother in, Korean, in the Korean War. You wanted to go there. You were seriously wounded. Came back to the United States and you wanted to go back. The real reason I wanted to go back, I fell in love with a Japanese girl when I was rotated from uh, R and R. No, when I w the division rotated from uh, uh, Korea to uh, Japan, mm -hmm. you know, we replaced by the 40th Division. I yeah. fell in love with a Japanese girl. I wanted to go to her, mm. but being a bad boy. I followed the older boys outside the camp, and uh, they, <laughs> well, I followed them and got caught coming back in. They're going to bust me, and I did. My dad's a military man; he don't like this uh, reduction. So I asked him, "Can I do something else?" He said, "Well, you can go back to Korea." That's the reason I went back to Korea the second time. What do you think about your service? Well. Didn't bother me after you know after all, all of me all went through. It didn't bother me at all. No regrets. Mm -mm. What no regrets? I even went back to Vietnam three times. Have you been back to Korea? Yes, I went back with the um, revisit the program. Um, well, actually, I went to another tour of duty in Korea uh, during peacetime. When was it? 19, uh, 1970, no, not, not 1967. Where did you go? I don't know. I was with the 1st uh, Cavalry Division. OK, so you s and what about after that? Have you been to Korea yeah, recently? Yeah, with the people from Hawaii, they, they go to... Uh, Revisit program, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when was it? Three years ago. Any message to our young generation about your service in the Korean War? Well, I think uh, everybody should uh, appreciate for what we did over there, we stopped the communists from taking over uh, Korea and the and uh, most of the uh, South Asian area. And uh, 
doctors appreciate what we did for them.